Welcome to the software element of the Eagleize training. We're going to go over all the settings in the Eagleize software. Uh, recommended computer equipment is a standard desktop or notebook computer with Windows XP or higher or a Mac. An open USB port and an internet connection are required. The first time that you plug in the Eagleize console to the USB port, uh, it will search the internet for a device driver, so you do need to have an internet connection. That should happen automatically. It should take anywhere from uh, one to two minutes for that to download and be ready to go depending on your internet connection speed. Uh, color printer for printing eye paintings or other creations is recommended. An appropriate table for the system uh, or projector and screen. If you're using a table, make sure that the height of the laptop or computer screen is level with the user's eyes. Uh, we don't want them to be looking up or down. We want them to have a full range of vertical and horizontal motion when they're aligned with the computer screen. Installing the software is very easy. Uh, click on the eeinstaller.exe. That's going to download the Eagle Eyes software, Eagle Eyes Paint, and Eagle Eyes Alien onto your computer. Then you can arrange those icons however you want them on your computer. Double click on the software. It's going to open up the window that you see on your screen. Now I did this on purpose. Well, you can say it says, please connect the Eagle Eyes console. So my USB is not connected. So I'm going to plug that in right now. And as we plug it in, we're going to see that warning disappear. And we get a second warning. A USB communication error has occurred. That's because the console is not turned on. So now I'm going to turn on the power. And now everything's up and running. So if you get those warnings, just check your USB cords. Uh, sometimes if you forget to plug it in, you may have to relaunch the software uh, to get it to recognize the console again. Now once you have the software launched, you do have to leave it open and running uh, for the Eagle Eyes to work. So you can open up other windows on top of it, but you need to keep the program, the Eagle Eyes software, open and running for it to work. Into the settings now, we have the mouse click settings here at the top. You can turn that on or off. The mouse click creates a single mouse click. It cannot do double click or click and drag. So to create a single mouse click, we have some uh, variables that we have to set in for it to happen. The radius is the area in which the user needs to focus in order to create uh, a click. So these are in pixels, 30 pixels. Uh, to give you an idea, 100 pixels is one inch on a normal computer screen. So they have to focus within a 30 pixel area in order to create a click. The dwell time is how long they have to focus within that area to create the click. To start out with, we want to start it out on a low setting, a tenth of a second. Uh, one second is actually really a long time to focus within a 30 pixel area to begin with. Uh, as the user gets better and are using maybe smaller things, smaller icons that they're selecting, a higher dwell time may be necessary to make sure that they don't click on the wrong icon, if they're, especially if they're close together. So that's going to adjust with the user's uh, ability. Uh, starting out, use a larger radius and a low dwell time to make sure that the user has a good experience and they enjoy Eagle Eyes, they get that cause and effect relationship uh, right off the bat and they want to use Eagle Eyes. The recovery time is how long in between each click. So when it's off, it's just going to click, 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 click. Uh, automatically which is good for some beginning games as they get better or maybe if you're playing a game where there's a sound or animation you want to have a second delay in between so it doesn't keep on re-clicking and making the sound over and over again or if you're watching a video you can enter in a longer time also so they don't click on it now if your computer seems to be acting a little erratic always double check your mouse click setting uh, for example one time I had a user watching a YouTube video and it kept on pausing and I thought my computer was having problems, but the mouse click was just turned on. So they kept on pausing and unpausing the video by watching the video. So double check that. The damping setting here is kind of a shock absorber. When you start out on a one, you're going to notice that the cursor kind of bounces and jumps quite a bit. So we're going to come into the damping and we want to set that usually between about a three and a five uh, when we set that. And that's going to smooth out the signal and uh, keep the cursor more stable. Now something to mention here is that on the console, if you increase the gain knobs, the gain is the sensitivity, you do need to also increase the damping. So if I increase the sensitivity of my my signal, I need to smooth it out a little bit more and I maybe need to go to a 5 or a 6 uh, depending on the user. Our next setting is the eyes and the head. 
all this does is basically reverses the signal. When you're using your eyes, you look left, you look right, uh, and the cursor follows you left and right. But if I use my head, I stare at the screen, and I move my head to the right, and my eyes are still staring at the screen, I'm actually looking left if I do that. So uh, in that method, uh, some users maybe want to use their head to move the cursor around, and so we can move that over to there, and that's going to reverse the signal. Right is now left, up is now down, because I'm using my head. For most users, though, we're going to stay on the eyes section. If they can use the head, head selection really well, uh, we'd probably recommend using camera mouse. You can download that for free at cameramouse.org uh, and try that. So normally, just try it on the eyes. You can try the head selection if you'd like. The head angle is if we have a user who maybe is has a their head always tilted at a certain angle, maybe in a wheelchair, uh, you can adjust for that. Now we always recommend that you start out and try it on a zero first. A lot of users can actually compensate for their head angle just fine. Um, so start out with zero first and then maybe do another session where you try it with their angle set in and see if they do better or worse when they're doing that. But don't, don't switch it back and forth during one session because that's going to confuse them. Uh, do it 30 minutes one way, 30 minutes another way on different days and see if they prefer one way or the other. The excluded zones are kind of margins that we can set in. The margins uh, keep the cursor from exiting that area. So for example, up here, we don't want the user to access our file menus while they're using the system. So what we can do is set in those excluded zones so that the cursor will not leave a certain area. And so they can't get up there to leave that kind of boxes in the cursor. Uh, traditionally, about 8% will, will work for any full screen games that will usually be enough to keep them out of your uh, bottom menus and your top menus on your screen. Uh, if you're using a smaller a smaller window though then you may need to shrink it in even more and maybe select uh, 20 or 30 percent on there in order to set that in. Down below we have the method to toggle cursor control between mouse and electrodes. Uh, what we want to do there is if we prefer the external switch on the console, we can just use that, or we can switch to Control key or F9, or on an Apple, the Command key. Uh, whatever your preference is for how you want to switch back and forth between mouse control and eagle eyes control uh, is up to your preference there. Now, coming back in here, oh, on the excluded zones, we do have a video that does go over that, a tip video uh, that goes over that in detail if you'd like to learn how to do those better. Now, once you have all these settings uh, put in, you don't have to re want to have to reset that every single time. So what we do have in here is you can save configurations. Uh, you can save it as a default if maybe you have want to open it with the same person every time, or you can restore it to factory configuration. But we can also save configuration as. And when we do that, you can see that we can create folders for different users. And then within those folders, we can create uh, a game configuration for each game that we play so that if the settings are different for each game, we can save it. So looks like he's already got Asteroid in there. Maybe we have a different setting configuration for Aliens. So we can save that in there also. And then that way, the next time that we want to play that, we just open config go into Justin and there's aliens and click on that and it loads in all of our settings automatically for us. So over time you can build up a library of activity configurations for the user, makes it quicker for you and makes it quicker for them. Under links we have the Opportunity Foundation website. Uh, on there you can find training videos, uh, help manuals, t uh, tips and tricks, and also we have a new activity library section of a lot of links to online activities that you can use with Eagle Eyes. So explore that and find some more options of fun things to play. And then the Eagle Eyes website actually forwards to the Opportunity Foundation website now. So that is your resource to find everything that you need. And then the help does have a link to about Eagle Eyes and then the manual. You can also find the manual on our website. If you have any questions, please feel free to call, email, uh, or contact us anyway through our website, and we'd be happy to help you with anything that we can. Thanks for watching.